Good afternoon, my fellow Lobotomites, and welcome to another episode of Roblox Elite Engineering. Today, I bring you this tutorial because my last one sucked. I tried making some kind of adding circuit, and it sucked because it had a memory leak. Something to do with, let's recreate that first, something to do with the adding circuit and number delay. You think they would put the constant number in the number selection. Okay, and then right, we need a switch box to get number input from your key bind. And then we'll make the up and down. We'll do R and F up. Uh, Let's see here, R and F. And then you have your addition, then you wire. You're up, which one was up? R, yes. So the left one, because it's input, we don't have to use a constant input for switch boxes anymore. So you just have left B1, up, and down minus one and then input goes here and then we get number display okay and that oh yeah this is the adding circuit that I made before and I'll show you why it's so flawed Huh, it's not doing it right now, but if you tap it, it'll kind of shake. It's not, hold on, let's try this with a smaller integer. It does it with decimals. Oh, it's actually not doing it. Okay, well normally it does this thing, weird thing where it goes up and down. And anyway, it has a memory leak. I don't know if it... Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, so, do not use this method. That was the bad way to do it. Did not use that method. The updated method is using a... Let me find it. A number cell. Number memory. And then... Uh, we use a delay boolean and a not gate to make a clock. This menu's messing with me too. Wire these together. Then you wire that. And you get another addition. The number memory, yeah, like that. Number memory into addition, and then addition into memory. And then your input goes in the other addition. And, oh, I forgot the display. And then I'm changing these back to one. And one. Hmm, okay. <laughs> A little bit of technical difficulty here. What am I doing wrong? It should be that the clock is constantly updating the number memory. And so then, as long as I have a plus one or a minus one, the number memory will constantly add itself. Okay, yeah, now it's doing it. So when I hold R, it makes the number memory add up. And it adds up every logic tick, which I don't really know what that means. 
I think it says this is the, as fast as it can go. But the rate at which it goes up and down is adjusted by the delay that you put in the Boolean delay. So when I hold R, it goes up. When I hold F, it goes down. And then you can, I will leave that up to your imagination as the viewer to decide how you want to use that. But um, that's how you hold one input to add, constantly add, and hold another input to constantly subtract. But what if you want to only press a button once to update it? In other words, every time you press, it adds, but it only adds one. That is the alternative. And I think for that, you just make the number memory update every time a key bind is pressed. So whenever I press one of these two key binds, it'll update. Let's see if that works. Yep, it works. So now, every time I hit R, it adds one. As long as I'm holding R, it only adds one. It doesn't do anything else. When I let go, it doesn't do anything else. Only when I press the key down, it adds. Same thing when I hit F. When I hit F, it only goes down, and it goes down once. Um, and one thing I'd like to mention is you will need a delay boolean. You'll need a zero tick delay boolean because sometimes when the server gets laggy the key binds will update the number memory cell before the number memory the number will change before the cell gets the boolean and so you'll be giving it a plus one or a minus one input but it won't change the number cell because it hasn't received the tick from the OR gate to change its input. Uh, so what this delay does is ensure that the number from the your number input here will change bef and then the number cell will update, if that makes any sense. And one more thing I'd like to add is if you want your adding circuit to cycle through a certain number of a certain range of numbers and what you do is you get two constant numbers um, yeah you get a modulo which when I see percent I think it's like percent like one percent of two, like if I have one percentage, it's percentage of two. Like I would think that's fifty, right? But that's not exactly how this works. It's let me just show you how it works. So you put your number cell into the modulo, and then it's your number cell percent the maximum you want. So let's say four or five. We want to cycle through five. So every time it goes up, it'll if it goes above a multiple of five, it will cycle back to zero. Um, I, I kind of jumped the gun a bit here, but it, this kind of lets you like cycle through a range. So if I, let me show you this little slot that I made, the save, I got this little selector, and this is what I'm using the modulo thing for, so whenever I hit, oh it's B and V here, so whenever I hit B, it'll add one, and it'll go down my line of LEDs, and if it goes above the maximum, which in this case it's 10, but zero is like the first thing here, so I have to get zero through nine. Once it goes above nine, it'll cycle back to zero. So even though my number box here, it keeps adding up, it cycles back. And you don't have to have the backward cycle either. Like you can just have one, and like every time you hit it, it goes to the next gear. So yeah, hope you learned something.